Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation. And it shall be a statute forever in your generations. The Eternal Light. The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations make free time available to present The Eternal Light, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Today's program, One Little Nanny Goat, was written by Morton Wishingrad. There was a little nanny goat, his mother's little kid. And this is a history of all the things he did. In fact, you might go so far as to say that this is a musical documentary history of the place of the kid in Jewish folklore. This is the season of the singing of the Passover Chad Gadiot, one little nanny goat, playful and young, which my father had bought for the price of a song. And along came a cat and ate up the goat, the one little nanny goat, playful and young, which my father had bought for the price of a song. <laughs> Each year, when the Passover Freedom Festival comes round, the children sing this song. Tall children, small children, old children, young children, children with gray beards who sing bass, and children up to here who pipe a treble. Everyone sings. Chad Gadior is an Aramaic song, a scholar, which is sung at the conclusion of the Seder service on the first two nights of Passover. Very enlightening. It contains ten cumulative rhymes and resembles the English house that Jack built, the French la petite fourmi qui allait à Jérusalem, and the German er schickt der Herr den Jokel aus. Our scholar is one of the variety described in the Talmud as a donkey carrying books. The first thing to catch such a scholar's eye is naturally the obvious. The song describes a nanny goat, which my father bought for two zuzim. Along came a cat and ate the goat. A dog bit the cat, a stick beat the dog, a fire burnt the stick, water drenched the fire, an ox drank the water, a butcher slaughtered the ox... The angel of death killed the butcher, and then God came and slew the angel of death. Thank you, scholar. Now, you sing the Had Me? Mm -hmm. I can't sing. I'm tone deaf. However, I will explain to you the deeper meaning of Had There is an old proverb which says that one fool can throw a stone into a pile of garbage, and a hundred wise men will spend a year looking for it. Had is an allegory. The kid symbolizes Israel. 
God is the father. The two pieces of money are Moses and Aaron, who buy the kid from Egypt. The cat is Assyria, the first to conquer Israel. The dog this is, is a very pretty interpretation and bears Syria. the approval of the generations of commentators. Macedonia. However, a commentator is essentially someone who has stopped singing. For example, the German Philipp Nicodemus Leibrecht in the year 1731 published a hostile commentary on our little nanny goat bearing the following title. This is only the title. Chad Gad ein Zicklein. Das ist ein merkwürdiges Rätsel aus der jüdischen Osterliturgie, welches in sich begreift die Begebenheiten und Schicksale des jüdischen Volkes, so sie von Ausgang Ägypti an bis auf die Zukunft ihres a noch täglich zu erwartenden Messie darunter verstehen. Very fortunately, in the year 1731, the Jews of the Ukraine and the Baltic provinces of Russia were paying absolutely no attention to German scholarship. Instead, they were singing a Slavic version of Chad Gadiot. The words are almost the same. I will tell you a little story. Come listen, young and old. For the old, the story is an allegory. For the young, it is merely a jest. Once, there was an evil tomcat who had no pity. This tomcat was hungry and therefore ferocious, and so he devoured the little nanny goat. And so to the end. Now, you might be tempted to ask, why all this to do about a goat? Well, here's our scholar with some questions of his own. Uh, what animal formed an important part of Palestinian husbandry? The goat. Mm hmm. The flesh and the milk of what animal were staples of food? The goat. The hair of what animal was woven into curtains and tent covers? The goat. And the skin of what animal was used for bottles? The, uh... Exactly. You cannot pick up the Bible without finding the goat. It was a scapegoat, which on the Day of Atonement carried away the sins of the people to Azazel. And the beginning of the Hebrew dietary laws is found in the prohibition against seething the kid in its mother's milk. The goat is the basis of many things, but not love. You are wrong. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thine eyes are as doves behind thy veil. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that trail down from Mount Gilead. The Song of Songs. What else? <laughs> The books of Hebrew prophecy are filled with nostalgia for former days when the young men of Israel were shepherds who kept their flocks against the hills. They gloried in the simple life. They dwelt in tents or in primitive booths. Thousands of years later, in the ghettos of Europe, men and women opened the ancient book and yearned for the days of Mishpat, days of righteousness and judgment. And so they glorified the Feast of Tabernacles, and a ghetto mother singing to her little baby, saying, Under little Jacob's cradle plays a snow-white kid. The little kid went to market to trade in raisins and almonds. But my little Jacob, he will not trade. He will study Torah. Mit 
child was never for material success. Throughout the rest of Europe, mothers prayed that their children would become lords and ladies, great warriors, but behind the walls of the ghetto, a mother sang in still another version of the same song, the little kid will be a trader in raisins and almonds, but little Jacob, you know the best of all trades, the study of Torah, study and become a writer of books, and you will become a good man and a pious man. Whatever tricks of sentiment memory may play, existence in the ghetto was mean and debasing. Thus, when outbreaks of violence were added to that of virtual prison existence, the ghetto dwellers broke away. Hundreds of the most venturesome went once more to the promised land. But they went to disappointment. They came expecting milk and honey. Instead, they found the reality of erosion and the desolation of malarial swamps. The land was bare and forbidding, a sick, neglected land, as sick and neglected and as deeply in need of comfort as the pioneers who came to her. And so a curious thing happened. The pioneers redeemed the land, and they, in turn, were redeemed by the land. In those first days, they worked from sunrise to sunset and then dropped where they were in exhaustion. But the work was healing and strength came. And for this new season of strength, poets like Chaim Nachman Bialik returned to the pastoral image and put down a few verses of poetry to entertain the children of pioneers. When my father came back from the fair... He brought me a little playmate, a friend. Guess what it was? It was a kid, a nanny goat, a kid of kids. My kid is young, my kid is small. Frog whiter than snow is his fleece. It came up and gazed at me, my dearest little kid. Come, we will make a treaty between us. You will be my friend. And I'll never let you out of my sight, my dearest little kid. And when down we go into the valley, we'll dance together always. You will skip upon the mountains light as a gazelle, my dearest little kid. To the words of Bialik, the Israeli composer Nachum Nadi wrote a melody. <laughs> Son returned to the book of Genesis for his inspiration, and the composer Pugachev wrote a melody. To the fountain came a little kid, a little white kid. Whence do you come, little kid? For answer it said, from Hauran. Is Laban the son of Bethuel well? Are Jacob and Rachel well? For answer the kid said, 
they are well. On the day we call Arbor Day, which is the 15th day of the month, Shvat, the children of the land of Israel celebrate a special holiday. They had come to a barren place. The cedars of Lebanon had been cut down. The myrtle, the sandalwood, the olive trees had been given over to ruin. And so the children brought seedlings of poplar and cedar and cypress. They paraded out of the old cities and the new frontier settlements into the deserts and the barren places. They planted their seedlings, and they named the day Hamisho Osor Bishvat, the New Year's Day of the Trees. Once in olden times, the land had been fertile, and white lamb and black kid had played together. Somehow the children knew that one day soon there would be another growth of green things in Eretz Yisrael. And that white lamb and black kid, their bells tinkling around their necks, would play on green meadows between green trees. This being the season of Passover, we return again to our one little nanny goat, playful and young, which my father bought for the price of a song. Was a little nanny goat, his mother's little kid. And this was a history of all the things he did. Yasashun 
شون را دقله گادیو تی زبینا بو بیدر زوزه خاد گادیو خاد گادیو Now, as you recall, the Khadgadjo allegory, like the English house that Jack built, is told in cumulative rhymes. In the Maurice Samuels translation, which we've used, a middle verse goes, And along came an ox and drank up the water, which had drenched the fire, which had burned the stick, which had whacked the dog, which had bitten the cat, which had eaten the goat, the one little nanny goat, playful and young, which my father had bought for the price of a song. Like many old children's songs and fairy tales, the emphasis is a grim one, even if the melody itself is gay. Perhaps by way of protest against the succession of punishment and the rather morbid descent into the grave, the modern Palestinian composer Gorokhov has written a new Chad Gadyo. It is a song which expresses the buoyancy and the optimism of pioneers. In this song, a shepherd plays his flute on a lonely hilltop. His only companion is a little nanny goat. A dog comes, wagging his tail. I'll guard the little nanny goat, the dog says. A cat joins them. I promise to live in peace with all of you, declares the cat. Then the fire comes to warm the companions. The stick cries out, don't let me rot away. Take me up. Use me to help build a house for you and your companions. And then deep from the parched earth is heard the wailing call of water. Please bring me up. Let me work for all of you. I'll give a ram a rush a tail, Khalil Roy Shame Kale. Khalil Roy Shame Kale, Miss Vakadash Le Yisrael. Bella Roy Rakohel Bad. Bella Roy Rakohel Bad. Bella Roy Rakohel Bad.
If you would like a copy of today's script, please send your name and address with 10 cents to cover the cost of postage and handling to the Eternal Light, 3080 Broadway, New York 27, New York. drama today, One Little Nanny Goat, was written by Morton Wishengrad. The music was arranged by Morris Mamorski and conducted by Milton Catons. Marta Schlammer and Cantor Robert Siegel were the soloists. Judith K. Eisenstein suffered, served as musical consultant on this script. Featured as a scholar was Martin Wolfson and Alexander Scurvy was the narrator. The production was under the direction of Frank Tapp. Free time to present the Eternal Light is made available by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations. This weekly program is presented under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.